Welcome to part two of what if everything you knew about disciplining kids was wrong. I'm Nicolene Peck. I'm a parenting expert and author, and I teach parents and children how to govern themselves. Even if you missed part one of this video, there are some amazing gems here that you can use to improve your parenting and to identify which parenting practices you do not want to use. Here's a really common mistake, and I think it's because someone must have taught this years ago, but parents think one of the best things they can do to fix a troubling behavior is to distract the child. Like, oh, here, do you want to play this game with me? Oh, here, here's a cookie or something like that. That is a parent not parenting. Distracting is not teaching. Distracting isn't helping the child develop their problem solving abilities and their communication abilities. Parents should not shirk their duty and just distract their children because they don't want to deal with it. That's actually negligent. So what a parent should do is they should decide every time some behavior happens that needs correcting or that is wrong, I will be the one that will correct it. In fact, I will enjoy it. I will look forward to it. Our mindset makes a ton of difference in how our children receive those corrections and on how much energy they take out of us. Do you know those constant corrections don't take near as much energy out of us if we decide that they're okay, that they're part of who we are and if we have the skills so that we don't have to get angry when we're doing those corrections. Some parents think that if you just take a picture of it or you laugh at it, that it goes away and that you don't have to deal with it anymore. This is bad parenting. We should not be making fun of our children's misbehaviors. So don't mock your children. Don't poke fingers at them. Don't talk about their mistakes to your friends. Sometimes we do this thinking that that might encourage our children not to embarrass themselves publicly by having this behavior, but we shouldn't do that. It's shaming really. So let's keep our children respected by just doing the teaching that they need. Their role as learner, our role as as teacher. Let's honor both the roles and then everyone's respected. Another mistake parents commonly make is labeling their children, saying things like, oh yeah, she's just lazy or, oh, you're so unmotivated. You're a liar, stuff like that. Why would we talk that way about our children? Our children are learning, they're a work in progress. Let's give them that. So again, just correct the problem. In fact, part of the correction for you is gonna be let it go afterward. Don't think of your child in terms of a chronic problem or villainize your child by giving them a label in your own mind. That's gonna destroy your bond with them and it's not gonna create unity in the family as a whole. Another thing parents often do is they bring bring up old stuff like, oh, my child didn't make their bed a week ago and now they didn't make it again today. So now they're going to bring it up. Well, last week you didn't make your bed and now this week you're not making your bed or last week you lied to me and now today you're lying to me. You know what? The old stuff is in the past. Leave it in the past. If you've corrected it, it's over. Now, if you're going to have a special heart to heart with a child about conquering a specific troublesome behavior and you want to bring up a pattern of occurrences in a really calm, productive way, then fine. Then it can be useful. But just talking about all their list of things that they do wrong every day does not help them. In fact, you're just emotionally dumping on them. That doesn't serve you and it doesn't serve them. What you need to do is a clear, consistent and assertive correction. If you don't have the skills for that, definitely go to teachingselfgovernment.com. Make sure that you get some of the resources. Maybe take the Teaching Self-Government Parenting course so that you can learn the skills you need to do that calm, consistent correction that your children need to learn self-government themselves. Have you ever seen parents take things away from their children? Some people take things away. Give me the phone. Give me the toy. You can't have snacks. You can't have whatever it is. They take lots of things away. Why do they do that? simple because it's emotionally manipulative. They get the upper hand on their child if they start taking things away from them just because they have the power to. Let's not manipulate our children. There is no need to take their things away unless that child knew ahead of time, if you don't use the phone properly, you'll lose the privilege to have the phone 
or something like that. You have to set it up ahead of time. But if you just start grabbing their socks and saying, you don't get to have socks anymore, or grabbing their toys saying, you don't get to have toys anymore, then you're just being a bully and you're power struggling. It's not effective and they're really not learning anything except for how to try to get around you. We don't want them to learn to work the system. We want them to learn self-control. Why do you do this? Yeah, raising their voice. Parents raise their voices at their children. They yell at them. This is not necessary. I know some parents think they need to get a child's attention and that's why they choose to raise the voice. But did you know calmness gets their attention more than yelling? Did you know when you are confident in your role as a parent, you don't feel the need to yell? So how do you become confident? Well, you've got to have the words to say. You plan those words out ahead of time before there's ever a problem and you teach them to the children too so that they know exactly what you'll say to fix the problems as well. This makes it so everyone has low anxiety, high confidence, and there's no need to disrespect or manipulate by yelling. Have you ever seen one of those parents that tries to control every little thing their child does? Well, that's called micromanaging. Micromanaging is not an effective type of parenting. Now I said before, we need to correct everything that we can, but not micromanage. There is a difference. So just because my child picks a shirt I don't like does not mean I should tell them they have to change it. I shouldn't be controlling of the way my child sits or stands or the way they chew their food or all all of these little things that we control all the time. There is a way to be consistent and correct everything you need to, but not micromanage. When you micromanage your child, you're actually destroying their confidence and you're destroying their own ability to learn to solve problems themselves. They learn and grow through childhood. We have to trust in this learning process. They'll learn no matter what we do. So let's just teach them the right lessons. And micromanaging is not the best way to teach the lessons. So what about nagging? Parents are always telling me, Nicolene, I'm such a nag. I don't want to nag my children anymore. What do I do not to nag? So nagging is bad. In fact, they stop listening to you. They tune you out. It seems like you're inconsistent. It's bad parenting to remind. Okay. So let's give that nagging another word, reminding. Parents often think, oh, I have to remind them that's merciful. But in the end, when the child never follows through the first time, they get bugged by the fact that they have to remind every time. Well, they shouldn't. They trained the child to have to be reminded to not take them seriously the first time. So if you have a habit of reminding or nagging your children, what you should do instead is be consistent and firm the first time. If you tell them this is how you follow an instruction, you look at the person, keep a calm face, voice, and body, say okay or ask to disagree appropriately, do the task immediately and then check back, and then they don't look at you or they don't do the task immediately or pick whatever step, then you immediately go to them and do the correction. You don't go to them and do a reminder and then another reminder and then maybe a correction. You do the correction first and then soon they won't need any more reminding. Another common mistake that parents make is allowing children to do their consequences when they're angry or allowing a child to stew and be frustrated and angry for long periods of time. Is that really merciful and kind to the child? No. What does the child learn about solving their problems when they get the opportunity to just be frustrated for a long time? Now I know somebody is thinking, well, wait, anger is one of our emotions and shouldn't we just recognize all of our emotions? Yes, but if you're emotionally intelligent, which I have a whole other video about, then you know how to recognize your emotions as cues, but what to do with them, not to control yourself, ruin your day, control other people with them at the same time. So be sure (laughs) to look at for that other video about emotional intelligence, because that's going to be super helpful. So what should you do instead? You actually should correct it. First, explain to the children how to accept no answers, how to accept consequences, how to accept when things don't go their way. There's a skill set for that. In our family, we call it accepting no answers or accepting consequences. And those are actually two separate skills. Anyway, in each of these skills, they have to keep a calm face, voice, and body. That's one of the steps. Another one of the steps is to drop the 
subject, which means they don't think about it anymore. They don't talk about it anymore. They just let it go and move on with their day. This is a logical thing to do. This is the person deciding I'm going to let my thoughts control the situation here instead of my emotions. And again, emotions aren't bad, but we have to know how to use them for the good so that they don't trap us, right? You know, I could probably go on with this list for a very long time. There are a lot of parenting practices and messages about parenting that truly are just manipulative and even lead to dysfunction in families sometimes. So if you want to know more about how to have really great parenting at your house, you're probably going to want to check out my next video, which is how does parenting style influence child development and behavior? Click on that link now and start learning more about how you can have self-government and teach your children self-government too.